Hey everyone, just coming to you with this public service announcement. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. So let me explain. First and foremost, it's free to do so. You don't got to come out of your pocket. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole bunch of other platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's why I got on it. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right. Peace. Peace, peace. We are back once again with Masterminds with Brother Shemel. I am your host, Brother Shemel. It's good to be back with another one. And um, yeah, we, we're just going to get some things out the way before we get into this subject because it's, it's a subject, um, there's a lot to talk about it. So first, of course, I want to thank everyone who's been tuning in checking out masterminds with brother shimmel checking out my videos on youtube um and for those who um, are interested you can check out all of my back episodes you can check my books out by going on to my website shimmel.com that's s-h-e-m hyphen e-l.com and you can check out my material my books um my videos uh, you can check out podcasts and things of that nature all in one spot. So once again, I thank you all for the support. Um, I've been getting a lot of good feedback. So I just hope to continue that and I'll give you guys information that, you know, will be useful to you and applicable. So with that, I want to get into today's topic and today's topic is really not a unique topic because this topic has been kind of uh, ran into the ground to be honest but i wanted to give a perspective on this topic that i think um will be beneficial uh a learning lesson and it's a and it's something that is not really being expressed as far as from what i've observed uh, thus far within this past week um the title of this is Sounds Like a Plan. And when you take the first letters, the first letter of each word, you, you get, you guessed it, slap. So, pun intended, um, we're getting into the, the, uh, the event that took place last week. Um, we're going to get into that. But before I do that, I'm going to read from the Circle Seven. I'm going to read a couple of a couple of verses first from one particular chapter, and that would be chapter 38. And then from there, I'm going to take the time to read the entire chapter 40 of the instability of man. So I'll start off with. Chapter 38, which is uh, the soul of man, holy instructions from the prophet, the soul of man. And I'm going to read the last two verses, verses 27 and 28. And it reads, general opinion is no proof of truth, for the generality of men are ignorant perception of thyself the knowledge of him who created thee the sense of worship thou owest unto him are not these plain before thy face and behold what is there more that men needeth to know okay so that's from there now I'm going to read the entire chapter 40 the instability of man and it reads, Inconstancy is powerful 
in the heart of man. Intemperance sway it, whether it will. Despair engrosseth much of it, and fear proclaimeth. Behold, I sit unraveled therein, but vanity is beyond them all. Weep not, therefore, at the calamities of the human state. Rather, laugh at its follies. In the hands of the man addicted to vanity, life then is but the shadow of a dream. The hero, the most renowned of human character, what is he but the bubble of this weakness? The public is unstable and ungrateful. Why should the man of wisdom endanger himself for fools? The man who neglected his present concerns to revolve how he will behave when greater, feedeth himself with wind while, he is, while his bread is eaten by another. Act as becometh thee in thy present station, and in more exalted ones thy face shall not be ashamed. What blindeth the eye, or what hideth the heart of a man from himself like vanity? Lo, when thou seest not thyself, then others discover thee most plainly. As a tulip that is gaudy without smell, conspicuous without use. So is the man who sitteth himself up so high and haveth not merit. The heart of the vein is troubled while it seemeth content. His cares are greater than his pleasures. His solitude cannot rest with his bones. The grave is not deep enough to hide it. He extendeth his thoughts beyond his being. He bespeaketh praise to be paid when he is gone. But whosoever promised it, deceiveth him. As the man who engages his wife to remain in widowhood, that she disturbeth not his soul, so is he who expecteth that his praise shall reach his ears beneath the earth, or cherish his heart in his shroud. Do well while thou livest, but regard not what is said of it. Content thee with deserving praise in thy posterity, shall rejoice in hearing it. As the butterfly who seeth not his own colors, as the jasmine which feeleth not the scent it cast around it, so is the man who appeareth gay and biddeth others to take note of it. To what purpose, say he, is my vesture of gold? To what end are my tables filled with dainties? If no eyes gaze upon them, if the world knows it not, give thy raiment to the naked and thy food unto the hungry, so thou shalt be praised and feel that thou deserveth it. Why bestowest thou in every man the flattery of unmeaning words? Thou knowest when returneth thee, thou regardest it not. He knoweth, he lieth unto thee, yet he knoweth thou wilt thank him for it. Speak in sincerity, and thou wilt hear with instruction. The vain delighteth to speak of himself, but he seeth not that others like not to hear him. If he have done anything worth praise, if he possesseth that which is worthy of admiration, his joy is to proclaim it. His pride to hear it reported. The desire of such a man defeateth itself. Men say not, behold, he have done it, or see, he possesseth it, but mark how proud he is of it. The heart of man cannot attend at once to too many things. He who fixes his soul on show loseth reality. He pursueth bubbles which break in their flight while he treads the earth to earth what would him honor so that right there is the entire chapter of the instability of man and when I read that it hit me like a ton of bricks in terms of what took place and so let's get to the subject matter at hand shall we all right, so 
at the time of this recording, it's been a week, exactly, one week, um, from the time where it was an incident at the Oscars, which I do not watch, didn't watch, <laughs> have no intention of watching it. I'm going to get into that too, but um, let's play it back. Okay, so I didn't know anything about the Oscars, didn't care, I haven't watched the awards in a long time, I'm going to get into the reason why, but he, um, there was, um, it came out on social media that Will Smith slapped the fire out of, slapped fire out of Chris Rock, you know, they call it the slap that was heard across the world, right, okay, so, when I first caught wind of it, first I was like, you know, Oscars, I ain't even watched the Oscars, I was like, all right, cool, it's just another, it's just another thing that is going to, um, basically, uh, just waste my time in terms of having to deal with because stuff like that seems to become viral. It's always things like that that becomes viral. And, I'm, it, and what I mean by that is that it's, it's a lot of things that are meaningless because that was truly meaningless. Like it, it, it does nothing for any one of us, doesn't help our situation <laughs> To even know about this. To even be concerned about it. But yet people are concerned. And I'm going to get into why. So. But I noticed of course. It got viral. People kept talking about it. It was on YouTube. Kept showing it. And then everybody started having an opinion. Which is why I read in the beginning. About the general uh, opinion. General opinion is no proof of truth. For the generality of men are ignorant. So now it becomes the court of public opinion that people are getting involved into this thing. So now people have given this thing uh, life, energy, giving it wills by their reactionary opinion of what it is. And you know what? I actually thought at one point in time I could even avoid talking about this. I'm talking about in my personal life, but <laughs> I was sadly mistaken because literally, okay, I'll tell you how bad it was. This is how bad it was. This past, this past week, uh, my birthday passed. I had my birthday uh, on a Wednesday and, you know, it was a good birthday. I have, you know family and friends who reached out to me wish me happy birthday but all throughout the week even when people were wishing me happy birthday and I'm talking about it all with the exception you know older people like in their you know over 65 you know I didn't get this and my niece shout out to my niece who called me she didn't bring it up but everybody else was bringing up oh you 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 saw what happened at the Oscars? You heard what happened? You know, like, they brought it up. I was like, oh, man, they can't can't escape it. Like, they had to talk about it. It would be like, hey, happy birthday. Oh, by the way, you heard what happened at the Oscars? So it was like, at that point in time, I already knew it had taken control of the minds of the masses, you know. And I'm not saying that in a, in a you know, to disrespect anyone who wished me happy birthday. I'm just saying that, that that is the power of this. I'm going to get into why this is why this is done and how it is done on the subconscious mind of the masses. Even those of us who say we're conscious, enlightened, and all that, even the most enlightened of us felt the need, you know, to speak on it, right? On social media. So, of those of us who say we're enlightened or conscious. But anyway, the point of it is, is that I started to think about it. 
I started to think, well, obviously I can't avoid this topic. It's coming to me, right? And it's gonna keep these people gonna keep talking about it. So my thing is, why? Why is it the way it is? Why? Why are people so invested in this story? You know. And I made me reflect on a couple of things. One, I did a video. I put out a video on my YouTube channel. You can check it out called The Metaphysics of Death. Where I spoke about, in particular, I spoke about um, the death of Nipsey Hussle. And while this is not a situation of death, this was an event that while prior to this, you know, not too many people were talking of this particular individual, you know, to that degree. And then all of a sudden he became practically worshipped to, to the point where even now, like you have people you know, putting out records with his voice on it, you know, they, you know, they got videos and and it's a thing to be, have a video with the mural of, of Nipsey Hussle and yo, you know, this whole conversations about what happened in Nipsey, who was behind it, blah, 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 right? So in that particular video that you can check, check out still on my YouTube channel, I spoke about something called celebrity. And I went into the etymology of the word. And in it, I mentioned the fact that celebrity in the 14th century was used to denote a solemn um, ritual. Right? A ceremony. That's what celebrity was. That's what the word meant. It meant a ceremony, uh, a ritual that took place. And this was used to denote actually the priest doing this. And when you get into the etymology, because it was something it's called solemn, right? Something that's holding high regard. And we get to the etymology of it in the Latin, um, celebra, it means frequented often repeat it and then it clicked not only the aspect of what makes a celebrity a celebrity but what makes this particular um, event that took place that they took a clip of a bite of because that's what people are operating now because we have many of us have a short attention span we only, <clears throat> excuse me, we only deal with that. How that takes hold of the mind. There's a ceremony being performed on the subconscious mind. A ritual is being performed literally by, by the etymology of the word. How? It's often repeated. Repetition. Repetition. You keep seeing it. You keep seeing it. You keep seeing it. Right? Now, And then we have to, and because this is being done, those of us who are in the know have to know how to work through and past that ceremony to break through the illusion. Okay. Let's just talk about the celebrity real quick. Okay. Let's just focus on the celebrity real quick before I get into the actual illusion of it. I I recently was listening to Bobby Hemmett and Bobby Hemmett made a very, 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 very poignant statement. Um, As a matter of fact, I'll give the reference of the video, the title of the video that you can check out where he speaks about this called Bobby Hemmett Ego is Evil or the Ego is Evil. And um, those of you know, I also spoke about the ego. Um, in my podcast as well as it's on YouTube as well Um, it's called Ego Edging God Out right so 
check this out. He said, he said, the celebrity is the one who is full, in some paraphrasing, is filled up with the most ego, the most egotistical people. Some of the most egotistical people are the celebrity. And um, your celebrities, your leaders, your, your preachers, your, et cetera, et cetera. And when it comes to celebrities, we in the masses usually say, in the public say, I want to be like that celebrity. I want to be like him. Right? And he said, that's the person you least want to be like. Because that person is engulfed in his own ego. And the more that pers a person is engulfed in the ego, the more that person is chained to the illusion and that's why um, chapter 40 of the Circle 7 is so important. When I read the part, verse 3, the hero, the most renowned of human character, what is he but the bubble of this weakness? Talking about vanity. The public is unstable and ungrateful. Why should the man of wisdom endanger himself for fools? So when you have this celebrity who's praised as a hero. The per you got people making videos about him, songs about him, how they want to be like him. Other, you know what I'm saying? Other artists talking about how they want to be like him. You got people putting videos of his motivational speeches. And you have a there's a mural of this guy in his hometown. Right? He's so praised as and and this person won an award at the same night that they did what they did. They're a bubble of this weakness of vanity. And how you know that is because this person who attacked another man in a public event, televised event went right after, issued a public apology and said that he was embarrassed and that this is not the man he want to be. This man is over 50 years old. The question becomes, why would you make that statement of the man who you want to be? At this point in time, why is there a type of man that you want to be? Aren't you already that man? Why are you in want of needing to be a certain type of man? And I heard a comedian say that he's following a dead man swag. And that dead man swag is, is the guy who used to have an a intimate relationship with his wife. He's following that swag. He's trying to chase that, which speaks to why he would get up on stage in front of a group of people in, in, the, in, the, in the audience and before millions of people on television and slap another man, right? But he didn't just slap any man. He slapped someone who is of the same group as him, right? You can use whatever term you want to use. Black, African, American, Asiatic, I don't care. Melanated. Whatever term. Someone who's of a certain group that he could get away with doing that. That speaks to another whole another conversation. I'm going to let that go. But I'm letting you know. Had it been someone of not of his own group, it wouldn't ride like that. That night. But we'll continue. So you can tell. And then he eventually resigns from the academy, said he betrayed the trust. So this is all about vanity, how people are looking at him. And this all this all sparked from how his own wife perceived him. He responded to what 
to <laughs> the side eye he got from his wife. So he's always a slave to how other people perceive him. Which makes him jump off the ledge. Now, I'm going to give you another quick story real quick. Because this, does, this doesn't only happen to movie celebrities and rap artists and all that stuff. To give you how deep this is, there's a brother. There's a particular brother on YouTube, a YouTuber. And he gives a lot of good information. Let me just say that. He gives a, he's, a, he's a researcher. And I will say, this brother gives a lot of um, good information. Um, some of the stuff um, I have, I don't totally agree with, 100% agree with. But nonetheless, I do, I do respect his research. I do respect um, how he delivers it and things of that nature. And he's, he started this YouTube channel some time ago. And he, in the beginning, he was just putting out information. He didn't have his, he didn't show his face or he rarely showed his face. You would just hear him. And this is why I have to keep myself in check at time to time to, to prayfully not go down this route. Because the ego is a slippery serpent. So, and I'm probably going to let you know about this next statement of who I'm talking about but you know he was putting out information he was just putting out the information and just wanted to let people know he just wanted to make them think get them to think and so he's continually building up his audience with this information which is which I say is very good information it's um it's intriguing it's thought provoking right it's against the norm and then he um, builds up his presence. You know, you start seeing his face a little more. He builds a name for himself. So his name becomes synonymous with this information. You know, he puts out products. You know, you know he's obviously monetizing, which is all fine. Fast forward some time down. He gets into a heated exchange with another celebrity who's been in the game a long time. And is known to argue with people and check them and, you know, make them look bad. Right? He's known, this, this other guy is known for this. And in the heated exchange, he keeps telling this guy, you know who I am. You know exactly who I am. That's the argument he's trying to present to this guy. Because the guy's like, well, introduce yourself. Who are you? Right? And he's like, you know who I am. Right? And then afterward made a video about that exchange talking trying to prove the point that this guy knows who I am that was ego that was nothing but pure ego that had nothing that was irrelevant to whatever message he was attempting to bring right because it takes ego not only to to think that this guy assume that this guy knows who you are but also to have to tell the person you know who I am Right? Oh, they know who I am. They just, you know, see, they don't want to know. They don't want to acknowledge me. Like they have to. It's that searching for the acknowledgement. It's the vanity. It's the ego. This is what this chapter, the instability of man, um, speaks on. And so we have to be careful of that ego, because that ego can get you at that point, especially when you have people who are constantly giving you praise and saying how great you are and how. You know, you're you're the man, you're the one person putting out this information, ain't nobody else doing it but you and all that. So that builds up the celebrity, the celeb, the celebrity, often repeated. Everything's often repeated. And then people will jump on the social media to jump on to promote you. And in order to build themselves up, they have to constantly repeat <laughs> putting out your stuff, you know. Yeah, the YouTube game is real tricky like that. So this all deals with ego. It all deals with, it all deals with uh, the analytics, the algorithms of getting people's attention. This is all to fight for the attention of the subconscious mind, of the 
masses. And we have to um, see it for that, understand that, and see how we can fight on that. But we're going to get more into that within the second half of this episode. Now, I want to get into the etymology of entertainment. But before I get into the etymology of entertainment, um, I just want to put this out real quick. And uh, as some of the younger people would say, it's keep it 100, keep it a buck, right? This particular act, and let's just look at it for what it is. If you were to tell somebody off the street that, yeah, two men, you know, I saw this guy walk up to another guy and slap him in the face. It may have a little conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, wow, he got slapped. What did he do? He didn't do nothing. Dude just slapped and walked away. Man, you know, that would, that would conversation would last, you know, a couple of minutes max couple of minute max you take that and you add the factor of it being on camera let's say it's two random guys the guy walks up to another guy slaps him it's on camera somebody pulled out their phone and, and filmed it right that may last for a few days, the conversation may last for a few days, you know, depending on how hard the slap is, depending on how, you know, what's the reaction and things of that nature. It may even be a viral video for a short time, but it won't happen because there's a lot of videos like that. It's not, it, there's a lot of videos like that. So let's say that becomes a conversation. That conversation may last, it may last a week or so. Let's say, let's say average time. Oh, God, slap him. I wouldn't even give it a week, but let's say a week. And if it's more than a week, it's pretty good. It, that's, that's a good video. But now you add two celebrities in the entertainment industry. One slapping another man. Then on top of that, you added that it was done at was was arguably the biggest event of that particular um, field that they are both in. Like, it is the epitome of all events. Nothing is bigger than this, right? That is going to last forever. <laughs> That is not going to ever die. Even if we find another viral moment in history, there's going to be a documentary about this. Mark my words. Mark my words. There's going to be a Netflix documentary coming soon. <laughs> not Maybe not soon, but it's going to come out. Mark my words. If I, if I predict nothing else, I predict this. There's going to be a Netflix. If Netflix is still around, there's going to be a Netflix documentary behind this. Trust on that. But my point of it is, is that you get what's called entertainment. In each of those situations, you have what's called entertainment. In other words, the conversation is entertained. The thought is entertained. People are entertained by seeing that. You catch what I'm saying? People like, it's like the whole aspect of the, um, what you call the accident. The accident phenomenon. Highway accident phenomenon. What's the highway accident? You get into a traffic jam on the interstate. We've all experienced this. And it's traffic is moving slow or it's stopped. And you just inching along the way on this interstate, on this road. And and then at some point in time, you see along the way where people get to a certain point and then they speed off. And then you realize as you get to the point that it's an accident up front. And you know why? 
traffic is stopped and moving slow because everybody can't help but to rub a neck and turn and see the accident. You may have seen accidents all your life. This is the umpteenth accident that's ever happened, but you can't help but turn around and look at the accident. That's how people are wired. That's how people's minds are wired. Just so you say, oh, look at that. I know I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of wanting, at, especially when I was younger. Like now, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that. But I used to be guilty, and I know a lot of people were, of wanting to see certain fights. <clears throat> I found it entertaining. Particularly women fighting. Girls fighting, it, that was just entertaining to me. And I, and I, and I, and I, you know, hey, I've grown (laughs) from that, (laughs) but (laughs) I used to be a person who'd be like an instigator. I used to say, oh, snap, oh, look at what she did, oh, man, you snatched a wig, you know, stuff like that. That's how I used to be, I'm being honest, keeping it on. And I realized that's, that's something faulty in our minds. That makes us do that You know what I'm saying Um, Which lets me track into the aspect Of the word entertainment So let me go into entertainment I'm going to get into the whole aspect of other things as well So in in the In the word entertainment The word entertainment Is actually used When you look into the etymology Is used to denote Keeping someone in a certain frame of mind Literally holding someone in a certain frame of mind. That's what it is to entertain. And that's why I've, I've mentioned a lot of times before when I would teach class, I said, entertainment is when you're inter detainment. Entertainment is when you enter detainment to be detained, like to be locked up, arrested. Entertainment is when you enter detainment. Right, because the etymology of it, the word enter in the Latin, which is I N T E R, right, means to hold, and then the other word, root word of entertainment is ten, T I T E N, which means to stretch, and the same root word of that is in attention, so. Attention and entertain hold the same root. So know that when you're entertaining someone, when someone is entertained, their attention is being held. And held meaning stretch. So that ten is stretch. What does it mean to stretch? What is being stretched? What's being stretched is the focus. Because A person will scan at something and may go into something else. But if I keep you at one point and have you keep the focus, I'm stretching your focus on that one particular thing. Put out another video. Make the video longer. Add music to the video. Catch what I'm saying? Stretching the focus on what, what is put before you. That's entertainment. That's what it means to entertain, to stretch your focus on something, whether it's positive or not, whether it's useful or useless. It doesn't matter. Got to keep the attention. Got to stretch it out, stretch their focus because people have a short attention span, right? Whatever it is to keep. Thus, the celebrity. The celebrity, often repeated, celebrate, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, right? Keep showing. In all of the shows... I noticed, I never watched the the, the award show. We're going to get into awards. But when I saw every major news broadcast on YouTube, when they did the clip talking about people's reaction to it, they always played back the video of of the incident that happened with the slap. They always played it back in full. They didn't freeze frame it. They didn't just, you know, they played the whole thing back. And then they played back the part where um, Will Smith is cursing out Chris Rock, right? They played it. They kept kept playing it, kept playing it. 
So even though people know what happened, it has to be repeated. Get what I'm saying? So this is all for the war of the attention of the mind, right? Now, there's argument as to whether it's real, it's staged. I say to that, it doesn't even matter whether it's real or not because the point of it is the after effect. What's important is the result, the reaction to it. Once immediate, once they know that they have your attention, they will do anything to keep it because that's what it's built on. And media is, is medium. It is that which connects you from one world to the other world, like a spiritual medium. So it takes you, it has to work on the subconscious mind. In other for this, in other, in order for this to be of effect. In order to be effective upon you. So, and then you know, people get into the whole controversy of well. You know, was, you know, was the wife disrespected, things of that nature. So it goes into a whole, it opens up a can of worms in the conversations about this. But the point it is, they got you talking, right? On something that if it was just two people on the street, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have gave it. 10 minutes of your time you wouldn't have gave that 10 minutes of your time of conversation you wouldn't go and call everybody around that you know <laughs> you catch what I'm saying do, do whole long posts about it and, and this is a post in and of itself this is part of the, the aftermath of it. this particular episode here but in this, I want to be able to teach us what it is that's taking place from the metaphysical aspect of it. You catch what I'm saying? So let me get into the awards aspect. Why well, I don't really watch awards. You say the concept of awards. I haven't watched an award. I haven't watched no BET awards. Soul Train awards. I haven't watched none of that in years. I haven't watched the Grammys, Oscars none of that in years right so and I don't even watch TV I don't watch regular TV I still um, watch Netflix from time to time but I, I can go I can go on a month months without watching Netflix to be honest my guilty pleasure truth be told is YouTube YouTube fortunately YouTube got me I'm working on it though <laughs> you know of course I have a YouTube channel but I'm working on YouTube. I can get sucked in a hole on YouTube. I'm being, I'm honest. I'm honest about mine. So, but this is one thing to backtrack on my personal story. Like I can go back to around in the early 2000s. It might have been 2008, 2007, 2006. I don't know, but it was in the 2000s, and I was living in Alabama. Um, and whatever time around this time, I don't know the year, but whatever year this was, this was around the time of flavor of love. I was watching TV back then. I would watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is before YouTube. This is before Netflix, all that stuff. So, and I was, I would watch basketball every now and then, like, Basketball would be my sport. I don't even really watch basketball anymore as a plate. You know, and basketball is my sport. Basketball as a team sport and uh, boxing. I like watching boxing. But I got out of that because YouTube, they give you all the highlights. So I don't want to watch a... a f- <laughs> I'm not investing in watching a full, you know, 12-bout match when I could just watch the highlights, you know. But I say that to say this. Flavor of Love, I was highly emotionally invested in. I, I hate to say that. I don't know why. It, it just, it, entertainment. It was very entertaining. And I remember, I would 
I would have conversations with 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 my ex girlfriend about this because we both watched it, and I would you know I would really be consumed in my mind just thinking about what took place the past episode, and then something hit me. A voice came to me. It's like, why are you worried? Why are you spending so much time? about something that's fake like it hit me one day it just hit me one day it wasn't anything i saw it was just a voice just hit me one day it's like you know you are spending all this time concerned about something that is a tv show you know better and i was like oh man they got me (laughs) you know what i'm saying and from then on i had vowed i was like yo I'm not watching these shows. I can't. That I, this is it's taking too much of my mental space. It's taking too much of my mental space, and I don't think I really watched TV like that since. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, the award show, all these things they they repeat it. So in reality, you really see the same thing that happens every other show before it. Or even more so, it gets worse. The music gets worse. The shows get, the performances get worse. It, it's just like, like they, what they call it, mindless entertainment. And I'm just speaking from my perspective. And it's just like, when I realized that, I said, there's no need for me to watch award shows. Well, what are we going to see? It's just going to be another desperate attempt to keep your attention so they gotta try to come up with something that they think is clever you know and I just outgrew it you know I outgrew it and I know that everybody's in their state so I this is not a judgmental thing for those who still watch it those who entertain I mean do your thing but as I gain more knowledge of of the uh, esoteric knowledge metaphysical knowledge you know I we got I began to realize and perceive and gain gnosis of the of the illusion more but it's not just that you know even YouTube all of this stuff the social media all of it is part of the illusion all of this is part of the illusion so we're still engaged in the illusion you know um The thing is, is that recognizing that you're, that this is the illusion and making conscious choices of how much you want to participate in this illusion is the key. If that makes sense, because, you know, it could be said, if you work in a job, you know, you're in the illusion, you know, if you're doing a business, you're in the illusion, you know, this money ain't real. We can go many different ways with it. It's. How much of this illusion do you want to participate and have it suit you? Or are you going to be swayed like the pendulum, you know, to move back and forth? You know, are you are you raising yourself to be above the pendulum, to be more in control of what you invest your energy into? You catch what I'm saying? So if you do have a past time, which means to pass time. Right? Are you consciously doing that and allowing yourself to say, This is what I'm willing to give my energy into, as opposed to you just being wowed and swayed by all the lights and the sounds? Catch what I'm saying? So, I want to get into, um, revisit into the aspect of chapter 40. Of the circle seven. Okay. So. In chapter two. In verse two it says. Weep not therefore at the calamities of the human state. Rather laugh at his follies. In the hands of the man addicted to vanity. Life then is but the shadow of a dream. So a lot of us. You know. We take certain things so seriously. You know. Like, oh this is a tragedy. You know. What it means for us as a people. And whoop 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 whoop. You know, it, it's just laugh at the folly. You know, 
laugh at it because it is a folly. It's all illusion anyway. The man in the hands of the man addicted to vanity, life is nothing more but a shadow of a dream. It's just a shadow of a dream. It's an illusion. Like Bobby Hammond said, the, the, the man who has the ego, the celebrity that has that ego, they have the, you know, they, they're locked into the, the illusion more than anybody else. And, they, and the whole thing is to keep you involved in the illusion. That's why motion pictures are so important. Where people become the characters of the movie. You no longer call or the television show where people who look at a, a person who played a character 20 years ago and will call him by that name. Oh, Ray Ray, you know, <laughs> for what's going on? Oh, hey, Ray Ray. And look, my name is Jonathan. <laughs> so you don't even sound like the character, but the people's mind and the subconscious mind is still associating that with what they saw on a screen. That becomes their reality. There's always been that virtual reality. And then it goes on later in the chapter to say, the man who neglects his present concerns to revolve how he will behave when greater feeds himself with wind while he is bred, while his bread is eaten by another. Act as you be, act as what becomes you in your present station, and in more exalted ones, your face shall not be ashamed. So you dealing with people who are always concerning themselves with how they are to be at a certain position, you know, right? Oh man, well, I got to get to this position in life. Like you heard about that, that statement. It's not the man I want to be. So these celebrities are always striving for an illusion of being looked at in a certain way. And then they're neglecting their present state, right? Like I said, that side eye that they, this man got from his wife caused him to act out of pocket because he was concerned. He's always been concerned throughout his whole career about how people see him, you know? And that gets into a whole nother thing about, the, you know, the situation with him and his wife and how his wife being just making him look bad for the past several years you know laugh at the follies this is this is somebody un un crumbling before the public you know and therefore as it says in the chapter the heart of the vein is troubled while it seems content his cares are greater than his pleasures so all the things that this person has the wealth, the fame, the comforts of life. He got greater worries. He's more worried than he is at peace. It says his solitude cannot rest with his bones. The grave is not deep enough to hide it. He extended his thoughts beyond his being. He bespeaketh praise to be paid when it is gone, when he is gone. But whosoever promises it deceives him. And we see so often with these particular celebrities, their fall from grace, right? Right? And you can name them. I ain't got a name. Y'all know who they are. The ones who went to jail, the ones who got caught in scandals. All of them, right? It was common with all of them is that they were so invested in the image they portrayed to the public. And it's like they led what they call led a double life, a secret life. But what comes in the dark eventually must come into the light. They neglected their present state. Right? It's always about being seen before the public. You know? They're going out here doing Instagram posts and you ain't even getting paid for it. Like they just wanted to be seen. Right? And in human in average Joe is doing that. You know, always feeling the need to put, uh, you know, look at me. I'm out here. <laughs> I'm out here at the park. Okay, a lot of people at the park. Yo, look at me. I'm at the movies. You know, I'm rolling down such and such street. Martin Luther King Street. Look at it. You know. It's to be seen. 
it's not just celebrities. Now with Instagram and all these other things, form of social media, everybody's being a celebrity in their own mind. You got Instagram influencers. Like, they caught up in that. Like, it's about being... That's the addiction and the disease of celebrity. Wanting to be like that. Like Bobby Hemmings said, that's the person you least want to be like. Because the person who's doing that, they are invested. They're tied to the illusion. And when the moment you start getting into that road, even though you may not be as famous, you're still doing the same thing, just at a smaller scale. Just at a smaller scale. And you'll suffer the same type of stuff. Because the people who like to always do that, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Instagram. I'm saying that people are taking it and using it from the mindset of wanting to be celebrities. They call them influencer now, influencers now. All of that, when you look at it like that, those people who do that, they only show what they want you to see, you know. They ain't gonna, sh- you know, a couple. They always showing a couple. We laugh and we hug. They ain't gonna show the arguments, you know. They ain't gonna show the abuse. Catch what I'm saying? Certain things you're not gonna show. And if certain things are shown, right, the negative stuff that gets shown on social media that leaks out, right, is usually done by a person. Who wants to expose the other person and say, look, you know, you know, he he ain't, you know, look at him. He's he done cursed his son out. (laughs) You know what I mean? Oh man, he done catch a fit. Look, he he out here talking to a girl. He's supposed to be married. She she out here talking to a guy. She's supposed to be, you know, all this exposing now. Now we get into the exposing. The same tool that is used by people to lift them up is used by other people to tear you down. Catch what I'm saying? That in which you um, you appear most strong is where you are most weak. By the same instrument. Celebrity. Okay? That's why it said in verse 14, why bestowest thou in every man the flattery of unmeaning words? Thou knowest when return thee, thou regardest not. He know he lieth to you. Yet he know if thou wilt thank him for it. Speak in sincerity, and thou wilt hear with instruction. The vain delights to speak of himself, but he sees not that others like not to hear him. <laughs> if he have done anything worth praise, if he possesses that which is worthy of admiration, his joy is to proclaim it. His pride is to hear it reported. The desire of such a man defeats itself. Men say not, behold, he has done it, or see, he possess it, but mark how proud he is of it. Catch what I'm saying? Meaning you always, and that's why people are talking about, oh, man, I got these haters. Oh, man, they hating on me. You got people who are invested in their haters. People who are invested, in, like, they think that's a, that is an accomplishment to have a bunch of haters. Right? There's no peace in that. You want you want all this flattery and stuff, like, you know, this gets into the bullying, cyberbullying, the tragedy where children are, are young people are losing their lives because of something that somebody said on social media. Right? Caught up in that. Again, the vanity, the ego. The ego. And if we work to move past that, right, which is spiritual practice, this deep spiritual practice that has to be done, introspection that has to be worked on, then we can move past the the illusion, you know, and then not only see the illusion of others, but also see the illusions within ourselves because we have the higher self and the lower self and the lower self is the illusion. So... I hope that this information uh, was of value. You know, I hope we can all learn from this. And um, until next time, we'll have another episode. And give me your feedback. Let me know what your thoughts is on this because I want to be able to give some constructive and useful information to the people. Um, 
with that, till next time, peace and love.